Let's go get one. Let's get you ready for week six right here on NFL Playbook. So glad to be here with you. Brett Lewis, my exo maestros, the Super Bowl champs, Coach Brian Billick, Sean O'Hara. What's up, Brett? You know, sometimes Looking we dapper. Oh, thank you, my friend. You guys, as always, uh, we, we debate over the game of the week a little bit. I don't think there's much debate this week. We got a good one for you on Sunday night in Foxborough. It's the Chiefs and the Patriots. Patrick Mahomes, boy, his performance this season, often venturing into uncharted territories. That unprecedented success could go there again this week. In fact, the last eight quarterbacks with 10 or fewer starts prior to playing the Patriots, like Mahomes, zero wins versus New England which seems a bit more plausible now that Tom Brady and the Patriots offense kind of figuring things out these last two weeks, averaging nearly 20 more points per game and almost 150 more yards per game than they were the first three weeks of the season, which will come in handy versus Mahomes in that high-powered offense. Here's Patriots head coach Bill Belichick on the Chiefs quarterback. Gets the ball to, to all of his receivers quick, quick release, uh, sees things quickly, can extend plays. Got a great arm, got a got a fabulous arm. Throw the ball out of the stadium. Makes good decisions, accurate, and get the ball out on time. So I imagine a fairly significant portion of the defensive playbook this week. Got to figure out a way to stop Travis Kelsey, right? Especially for the Patriots who've allowed four touchdowns to tight ends this year. That's tied for most in the league. So how specifically does Kelsey challenge New England? Well, these two best tight ends in the league. Yeah. And you would yeah. think the Patriots would know how to stop a tight end by watching what all the people do to try to stop Gronk. They see it a lot. And he does a lot yeah. of different things. Let's look at and, – and for obvious reasons, a lot of attention goes elsewhere. You can see right here exactly what happens. you got a three-man side that includes Tariq Hill, okay? And within that, so you got too deep to begin with. So Pat Mahomes isn't quite sure what he's going to face yet, and he sees, obviously, on the backside – here on the Kelsey side is a linebacker. He knows this could be pretty good. Well, watch what happens. They rotate out, and Patrick Mahomes is young, but he can count. I got five guys that are going to that three-man side. That means my one-on-one backside with Reuben Foster, pretty good, but he's not going to match up with Kelsey. Watch this catch right Ooh. here. Oh, you know, that's, that's, un, that's undefensible. Now, this, this one gets kind of fun. They take Tariq Hill and motion him around. Again, I got a three-man side back here, and I want you to watch what happens to the defense. Watch the screen. Well, yeah, they're screaming. They come back here, and now what are they going to do? They throw a little screen backside to Kelsey with, like you say, Huey, Dewey, and Louie out front, and they get themselves a big play here. Now, on the other side, obviously the Patriots, they're all about small ball. Tom Brady's been brilliant. He's thrown 60% of his passes last week on a game that he threw for almost 350 yards. Wow. We're five yards or less. One throw of 25 yards. Hmm. Well, what does he do? It's how great is it to have – Julian Edelman back. He's got Edelman, Gronk here, and they just switch up the responsibilities. This is real simple. You're going to see Gronk coming on a, what's called a basic cross. You got Edelman back here. You got another guy sitting down here, and now it's just a triangle. And Brady's going to take whatever comes his way. He loves to go to Edelman. So okay, we're going to make we're going to do something dramatically different now. We're going to totally change it up. I got Edelman here. I got Gronk here. So now I'm going to let Edelman run that little basic cross or quick slant, and I'm going to let Gronk come in and sit here, and I'm going to let this guy go in to the flat. So it's the same kind of triangle read that Brady's looking at. This is their extended handoff. They don't have to run the ball a whole lot of times because these little four and five yard throws become their running game. That's going to be job one for the Chiefs. And uh, the Patriots have been protecting Tom Brady really well. Least sack quarterback in the league along with Patrick Mahomes actually. And, and it's kind of for two reasons, right? One, he gets the ball out really quick. Under two and a half seconds on 50% of his throws. And he's so good at stepping up in the pocket. But the Chiefs will make that difficult. Yeah, sacked just six times. That edge rush is not really an issue for Tom. He steps right. up, but it's inside pressure. How do the Chiefs do that? Well, I think they've done a pretty good job. They've got 15 sacks already this season. But they're doing a great job, and Bob Sutton's doing a great job, of moving guys around. And when you look at what they're doing, I, I love this look right here. You've got Justin Houston and D Ford inside. They bring the defensive ends inside. They're lined up over – the guards, and then you've got your big boys outside to push the pocket. Well, I don't look, think that's legal, is it? Are you allowed to do that? You're allowed to. Yeah, you can move them around. And I think when you look at what it does right here is look at right now what you've created. D Ford against a guard who's not used to all this space. And watch D Ford speed. right here get on the edge. And this ends up being a sack right here. Pressure right up the B gap. You can't step up into that. Now, here's another look that I thought they did a great job, and Bob Sutton goes with a three-man rush here, but it's not your typical three-man rush, Coach. 
They've got their big boys out here, D Ford, Justin Houston. They're dropping in coverage. So the rush inside creates one-on-one -on -one matchups right here. One-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one, -on -one. And now you've got pressure. Allen Bailey right here against the right guard gets a big sack. The pressure inside has been huge. Allen Bailey has four sacks. D Ford's got four sacks. But of those 15 sacks the Chiefs have, 11 of them have come on first and second down. It's one of the reasons why the Chiefs have been so good on third down. They're getting you in third and long because of the sacks on and first and second And that eight-man drop may be the answer to that small ball we just talked about that the Patriots love so much. Yeah, take away Julian Edelman. Right. If they could still find a way to get pressure, it helps. Rhett, you might be asking yourself, well, how do we slow down the pass rush? Well, I've got that answer for you. Run the football. Yeah, Hand the Patriots off, with Sony Michelle. That's the reason why they used one of their first-round picks on him. And it's paying off right now because he's getting into a rhythm. And when you look at what they're doing offensively, 136 yards yeah. rushing in the last two weeks. And it's not just Sony Michelle rattling off run plays. It's Gronk right here on a wham play. They get Shaq Mason, the guard, right up to the linebacker. Look at this crease right here on this design play. I mean, Coach, you could run through this hole right here. And you could probably Looks score. Good. That's how big that hole is. And in the NFL, that doesn't really happen very often. So it's great design, great execution. Gronkowski, great receiving tight end. Also one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. Now, how about this play? This is slant 37 gas, coach. And you're going to get down block right here. You're going to get a double team right here. They edge the defense. Trent Brown does a great job. They're going to pull the right guard, Shaq Mason, around. And this is basically single back power. But watch the crease right now. Trent Brown, he can block the sun. And look at this big boy right here. He punches over the hip, seals the linebacker. Look at what Sony Michelle is looking at right here. I mean, this is a great vision right here of him one-on-one -on -one with this safety. And I don't know many safeties that are going to be able to handle him one-on-one. -on -one. He can run through you. He can run around you. This Patriots run game has been big the last couple of weeks. I mentioned what they're doing on the ground. And against the Kansas City Chiefs, I like this matchup. The Chiefs are giving up over 5.7 yards yeah. a carry, most in the NFL. So I know it's a quarterback-driven league. And everybody wants to know, can Tom Brady keep up with Mahomes? With this kind of run game, I don't think he'll have to. And let's not forget that Kelsey came into this league. He's a pretty good blocker, too. He came yeah. into the league as a third-round pick that was supposed to be a point-of-attack blocker. They yeah. didn't know he was that good down the field. So Kareem Hunt with Kelsey blocking might be an answer, too. All right, back here on Playbook. Time now to reveal this week's Built for Tough Offensive Line of the Week. Sean O'Hara, do the Thanks. honors. Thanks, Brett. Yeah, how about the New York Jets? Why fly when you could drive? Kelvin Beecham, James Carpenter, Spencer Long, Brian Winters, and Brandon Schell. How about 323 yards on the ground? Great job, boys, up front. And they kept Vaughn Miller off the quarterback. Not one sack or quarterback hit. How about for this upcoming week, Rhett? I want to see how the Denver Broncos can handle this L.A. Rams defense. Garrett Bowles at tackle. Ron Leary, the left guard, going up against Aaron Donald. Leary's done a great job this season, has yet to give up a sack. So it's going to be a great matchup to watch. No doubt they're going to want to run the football and keep those guys off their quarterback. Boy, the Steelers and the Bengals, Ravens kind of all kind of tied up there in AFC North Division champions since 2011. Steelers do lead the way with three and a big matchup with the Bengals uh, here this week. And the Steelers coming off their second win of the season. Now, there have been some drama surrounding really? that Ben drama? Roethlisberger, <laughs> no. Antonio Brown connection. Oh, don't do it to him, coach. Uh, but those two had it working last week. In fact, they said, uh, AB said, the Wi-Fi was lit. So, coach, I will not ask you to interpret yes. that. But no, I I'm, hear I'm a Wi-Fi guy. It was yeah. sluggish to start. Oh, I hey, that. now we're, now we're in. But, but, you know, when I went back and, and looked at this, I thought, because he was 13 targets, six receptions, I thought, okay, what am I going to see? I'm going to see Ben Roethlisberger maybe forcing the ball yeah. to A.B. To, to, to just kind of calm it down. It's not what I found at all. Because these guys are so unique. Here you're going to see what I'm talking about. Uh, A.B.'s down here in the bottom. Looks like too deep. Now, Ben Roethlisberger, he's scanning. He wants to go to A.B. But he sees three over two right now. He sees the safety coming down. So right now he knows, okay, I don't like these numbers. I'm going to go back the other side where I know I'm one-on-one. -on -one. So I go back here. A.B.'s going, well, you know what? I'm not going to be used. We've done this a lot. I'm going to turn and go vertical now. Turn, I'm going to change the route. Ben doesn't like what he sees. He doesn't even have to look. He knows that A.B. was going to run that jerk route and go vertical, and now they've got a touchdown. He didn't even have to look. Put it in the end zone. A.B.'s going to be here. Now, this one I like as well. You're going to see one-on-one -on, -one on the top side, free safeties in the middle. So right now, Ben's thinking, well, I'm going to go to A.B. I'm going to turn my back to it. He looks to see. Is the safety where I thought he was? Yeah. He doesn't even look to see if A.B.'s open. He just throws it at that perfect 
bomb. Where is that? It's 40 to 42 yards, five yards from the sideline. You put it in the barrel. He didn't even look to see if A.B. was there. He just threw it in the barrel, and what do you know? Comes up with a touchdown. Coach, that looks like Ethernet to me, not Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, it's I pretty good, baby. So, so, yeah, they work it out, and sometimes it is sluggish. Sometimes it's not. But at some point in a critical situation where the play breaks down, you know that Ben Roethlisberger, by instinct, is going to go, where's A.B.? Yeah, this this just the fourth time that Ben Roethlisberger's thrown for three touchdowns. Antonio Brown's caught 100 yards, and then they've had a 100-yard rusher. Obviously, James Conner, a big part yep. of that, Coach. So, you got a perfect play oh, perfect queued play. up for us to, to continue that success. And, and I'm going to channel a little of my Vince Lombardi here if you'll watch. Yeah. We, we saw this last. Everybody runs this play. It's just going to be a weak side counter. And it starts out. We're going to, what do you say? Four hands on the down guy, four eyes on the next level. That's right, Coach. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. These are easy blocks for these guys back in here. We're going to take this backside tight end. Now, we're going to release outside. I can either go over the top or go underneath to let this guy rush up inside. And now this tight end's going to come and block right here. So now I'm going to take Connor, and, and hopefully they get Le'Veon Bell back here. He's going to start strong side to get these guys to flow a little bit because it looks like a zone play, and then he cuts back here. And this is when Lombardi comes in. You get a seal here. You get a seal there, and you run to daylight. And they're very good at it. Connor understands the counter principles of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they got it going pretty good right now. Yeah, and uh, Ben Roethlisberger said that actually, you know, James Connor deserves a little playing time, we, even when Le'Veon Bell does come back. Why so, wouldn't you so give him the ball? See that. He's got Jerry Kramer leading the way. So uh, let's take a look here at the Bengals offense, though, which has seen the most, uh, the biggest increase in points per game. Don't adjust to your TV. Year. Yeah, they're nope. averaging over 30 Those are points accurate. a game. That's a top five scoring offense right there. And you know what's kind of interesting, though, Sean, is they're not overly relying on A.J. Green to get it done. No, it's not just A.J. Green. They, they lost Tyler Eifer, yet you still see the red zone percentage right there. So you've got to give credit to Bill Lazor, the offensive coordinator, doing a great job designing different plays and let me show you what I'm talking about because you look at the play design and there's CJ Uzama and I mentioned Tyler Eifert's out but he's using Joe Mixon to kind of move the defense right here and everybody's saying hey is it a screen what's going on everybody forgot about the tight end Uzama is running down the field he should have scored right here all he had to do was break inside a big boy Cordy Glenn right there but that should have been a touchdown but it's great design how about attacking the secondary right here and the linebackers? A.J. Green's going to take the double team. So that takes a defender out of, the, out of this space. And then you've got a clear-out route right here to occupy the safety. Joe Mixon versus Kiko Alonso right here, a linebacker. Even if you don't block the tight end, the defensive end right there, Andy Dalton still finds a way to make a big throw. Tyler Boyd in the slot right here. Another great design. This is cover three, Coach. A.J. Green on the bottom is going to run the corner off. Now you've got this huge void right here on the sideline for Tyler Boyd to attack. And Andy Dalton wrote, knows right away. He recognized the defense. I've got Boyd. It's an easy throw. This offense is humming. You saw the stats. Last year, they averaged 18 points a game. This year, 30 points a game. And it's not just A.J. Green. It's a great supporting cast. Yeah, i got to be aware of that Pittsburgh pass rush this week, though, leading the league in sacks coming into this game. All right, hey, we are obviously sending all of our thoughts uh, to the folks affected by Hurricane Michael down in the southeast right now, and they do need your support. And you can help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to these families. Donate today by going to redcross.org or text MICHAEL to 90999 to give $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Relief. Well, check out our True View video this week from the Giants-Panthers game. Why you got to do this, Red? But, Sean, you got to see all of the angles here. Really kind of shows you how the play design <laughs> opens this thing up for Curtis yeah. Samuel. Let's watch all these missed tackles. Here, make, yeah, from any angle, all the missed tackles look really bad oh, for the Giants. But Curtis universe. Samuel, great 25-yard touchdown. And the Panthers get the win. Okay, so let's talk Panthers Redskins here. Redskins really struggled in the run game. Yeah, how about this play? This is a G scheme coach down here in the red zone. Major Peters has run this a thousand times. You pour it up inside the kick out, follow your pulling guard. Where are you going? He, he bounces it outside. I don't know what you're doing. That's not all day. That's all wrong. The Washington Redskins need to run the football against Carolina. They ran, Adrian Peters had four carries for six yards. But here's another problem, right? This is all about numbers and angles, right, coach? You got a seven man box, you only got six blockers. Alex Smith has got to see this. Throw the fade. He looks left right there. He's got an opportunity, but you've got an unaccounted for defender right here. You can't expect your running back to take care of that guy. So, got to find a way as a quarterback to get out of that bad play. Now, the bad news for them is they're playing the Carolina Panthers defense, who last week, as Red was just showing, they balled out against the Giants. 
set the edge on the front side with Shaq Thompson right here, and then they forced the cut back into Julius Peppers, who's coming in here on a stunt, and the backside safety, who's the forced defender. So the Carolina Panthers doing a great job. They had six negative plays last week. Yeah, the Redskins' run game has found trouble with consistency in the run game. All right, not, Coach, not let's talk Cowboys-Jaguars here. A lot of talk about lack of a number one receiver for the Cowboys, but it's also about the absence of their number one center. Yeah, uh, Travis Frederick was huge. And what they've not been able to do against the Houston Texans, they had it going pretty good for the two weeks before that, and you're going to see why. Here against the Detroit Lions. Looney does a good job. He gets up to the second level, and then you're going to see the backside guard and tackle, right? What do you always say, Sean? Four hands on the down guy, four eyes up to the second level. Even on the backside, the receiver blocks up in here, and you get a big play. They get down to the second level. This is the way this is supposed to be. Double, move up to the second level, being physical. This is the first play. I want you to watch the same play against the Houston Texans, the very first play of the game. Doesn't quite go that way. Center gets absolutely blown up by the nose guard, and we don't get four hands on the down guy. We don't get one hand on the down guy. We don't get a single eye on the second level. This thing gets blown, and even backside, the guy whips on the backside on the end. So it's like a team meeting on the Ezekiel Elliott Hill, and he just gets blown up. So they have to be able to run the ball well, or they got no chance at all. They got to run it like they did for those two weeks when they were over 400 or 350 yards in the two weeks, not under 100 like they did against Houston. And even if they were at full strength, this Jaguars front would be a stiff challenge for the Cowboys offensive line. uh, No question about it.